What's up guys, Pedro V here coming to you with a new video. Before I start the video, I just want to say thank you guys. About to hit 60,000 subscribers. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching my videos. I will be coming on with some new content very soon, so, so stay tuned in for that. And if, and like I said guys, if you grow on your channels, I will help support you with that. But with that all being said, God bless you guys. Enjoy this new video. And... God bless. Back now on Eyewitness News with a fireball in the sky over New Zealand. There you can see the fireball break into a self-proclaimed fireball chaser. Thinks it could be a decaying satellite from Russia. An astronomer says he could not rule out that the light coming from that falling could be coming from a falling satellite. Well, we now know it was a, an old Russian satellite. So the satellite was designed to pick up uh, missile launches by the United States. It was part of the Russians' early warning system. Known as Cosmos 2430, it would have looked something like this. Launched back in 2007, it had been orbiting the Earth every 12 hours since, until it came crashing down over New Zealand last night. First of all, we saw it coming this way. Yeah. Looked like it was coming right straight towards us. We were a bit scared that we were about to get hit by it. Those in the Coromandel seem to have the best view. And this is like, oh my god, look at that. And I was like, oh my meteor show god, and there it was. It took just over a minute for the satellite to burn up, cutting a path across the upper North Island and eventually combusting off the east coast. As those bits fall apart and they're incinerated, they're burnt, they burn in different colours. So often you get some fairly spectacular colour displays as well, uh, sort of kind of like a fireworks. Weighing about the same size as a small car, it was torn apart simply by friction from the Earth's atmosphere. But just how common is an out-of-control satellite? I certainly expect um, you know, several of these events to happen during the course of the year. Um, but having it happen over New Zealand on a beautiful summer's day, that, that, that's, um, that's rare. Which means celebrations like this Yay! are entirely understandable. in central Mexico, where the death toll from last night's pipeline explosion has risen to more than 60. That's according to an update from state officials just last hour. The explosion occurred north of Mexico City. Well, at least 66 people are dead and almost 80 others injured after a pipeline exploded in Mexico. Now to the breaking story overnight out of Mexico. A pipeline goes up in flames. ABC's Lana Zak is in Washington with the details. Good morning, Lana. Good morning, guys. The images coming in from Mexico are stunning. The death toll jumping this morning to at least 66 killed, more than 70 others injured in this massive fire in a small town in the state of Hidalgo, Mexico. In late December, Mexican authorities ordered pipelines be shut down temporarily. Exploded, causing the pipeline to spew, spew feet, fuel dozens of feet into the air. Ambulances and doctors were sent to the scene immediately after the deadly explosion. The injured were rushed to hospitals in Mexico City, and all of the inhabitants in the area have been evacuated, according to state oil companies. Petroles Mexicanos. Well, yesterday on the program, CBC reporter David Bell told us about a strange mystery in Carstairs, a town about 50 kilometers north of Calgary. A number of people are finding the key fobs for their cars stop working when they're in the parking lot of the local co op, and sometimes their car alarms suddenly go off as well. It's become the talk of the town. Andrew Eaton is part of the team working with co-op to figure out what's happening. He's a former technician with the Department of National Defense and now lives in Carstairs and joins us now with the latest. Good afternoon. Hello. All right. Uh, for people who missed uh, the story yesterday, what can you tell us about what's happening in Carstairs? Well, there's um, a signal of some sort that's uh, jamming up a certain frequency that uh, the key fobs work on. So... There are two frequencies. Uh, generally, you know, you've kind of got some uh, Asian, Japanese uh, car manufacturers. They work at about uh, 433.9, and North American cars are generally down about 315 megahertz. So, for example, I drive a Chevy, I'm okay. 
it's working. Oh. <laughs> the uh, interference is right around right on 433.9. So it's uh, been frustrating for folks. You know, your your car won't lock uh, or unlock sometimes, uh, won't start, or uh, the alarms are going off. So they're, uh, we're just trying to figure out what's going on. A huge fireball and nonstop smoke billowing for hours in San Francisco after a gas line exploded yesterday afternoon. People were seen running for their lives as the flames spread to nearby buildings. It took PG&E more than two hours to turn off that gas. And with the block, is, while it's still smoldering, crews are working overnight to secure that area. CBS 13's Adrian Moore brings us the latest. All of a sudden, it ignited, and the flame just shot like straight up in the air, probably 20, 30 feet up in the air. Flames and smoke lit up the February sky over San Francisco as a third party contractor hit a PG&E gas line that blew. And I actually thought it was a bomb for a second, so I just thought it was taking off down the street. The two story building on the corner is the Hong Kong Lounge 2 restaurant with apartments on the second floor. People within a one mile radius of the fire were evacuated as crews tried to get the upper hand. But why did it take more than two hours for PGE crews to cap the gas leak? The utility says it's complicated. You can imagine trying to hand dig into asphalt, it takes time. So we needed to go slow. We needed to put together a plan first, then slowly, methodically hand dig to get to points where we could shut off valves or pinch lines to shut off service. A big nationwide outage. Now, it's affecting people who are trying to log on to their accounts via mobile apps or online, and intermittently, people trying to use their debit cards. Uh, well, Fargo has been apologizing via Twitter all morning. Their most recent one said, We're experiencing a systems issue, systems issue, that is causing intermittent outages, and we're working to restore services as soon as possible. So, we don't know yet. Is this just a software glitch, in which case you file this under Stuff Happens, or is it something? more troublesome, such as a hacker getting into their system and cutting off access, and that would be a very big deal. And I think, among other things, what this really highlights is, as our country increasingly transitions to digital transactions on the financial front, e-commerce, and all sorts of uh, business transactions that are based primarily on the internet, if that goes out, it literally can bring the wheels of commerce, the wheels of the economy, to a halt. That's a very big deal, even if we're talking just a software glitch or, as I say, let's say an act of cyber warfare. It's just a reminder that this could be a big deal. Another developing story we're following is the widespread banking problem for Wells Fargo customers. Yeah, the outage is apparently preventing customers from logging onto their bank accounts online. Action News reporter Gray Hall, live in Center City with more on what Wells Fargo customers need to know at this hour. Gray. Hey, Rick and Sarah, you can imagine the panic, the frustration. You go to your phone or maybe your iPad or computer to log on to your bank account and Nothing happens. Not good news. This outage causing a whole lot of concern for customers. In fact, take a look behind me. Many showing up to this Wells Fargo Bank here along Market in Center City trying to get some answers. For the most part, customers tell us the ATM at this Wells Fargo in Center City is working, but with a widespread outage. That may not be the case at all ATMs. Wells Fargo says the outage is preventing some customers from logging into their online bank accounts and mobile apps. The bank has posted a notice on social media alerting customers about the outage.